breakfast time. There's all my gear, what I need to live out in the bush for eight days. So everything's packed in the backpack with room to spare. I'm gonna get out the air. Fold her down as much as you can. I'm not that happy with the backpack. I wish it had a little bit more support, but for the price at $100, can't go wrong. She's ready to roll. The original plan was to take the Abu Dufan down. Down here to Lawn Harris, and then down to Bard Al where we're gonna camp. But we talked to the, uh, the guy who's in the uh, rental store in Algonquin Outfitters. At Brent. At Brent, and he said, this river is just all sand bottom, probably low water. So what we're gonna do instead. I think he said mud bottom, which would be Mud worse. bottom, sand, water, whatever. Nope. We're gonna take this other river that comes out the northeast end of the lake. I forget what it's called. I actually don't have like a nice laminated map for it but it looks a lot shorter. Uh, we're here, we're gonna paddle back up, go down, and then we gotta, once we get to that river, we gotta go down Birch Cliff Lake, 1,000 meter portage, another 1,000 uh, meter portage from Calm Lake down to McDonald. And then from there, we're kinda, we're back on route. It should be pretty simple. You dig? Kind of an exciting day today. It's like starting, this is like our real trip starting, basically, we don't know what the conditions are going to be like. Uh, we haven't mapped it out on the map itself. We just learned about this when we got to the Brent store on Friday. So it's, uh, it's a good feeling. Adventure. I might put away the go the uh, DSLR because it seems like a little misty. I don't know if the rain's going to come down, but I don't want to get caught with my camera out in the canoe. So I think I'll switch to GoPro. Kyle just figured out his underwear on backwards and his shirts inside out. He's a grown man, folks. Grown man. It's day five. Give me a break. <laughs> it's day five already. Wow. I knew it, but saying it out loud is a different thing. Hmm. And so starts the fun. This is what we'll probably be doing for a lot to lotto today. There's moose tracks all over this little sandy part. Not the biggest one there. 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 And then I think we found our access river into there. So that's what we're gonna try. Wish us luck. Kind of cool, eh? So we came up to this campsite that you can only access by this little, it's, like, it's not even a river, a little stream that we're going through. And uh, it's the, just the prettiest campsite we've seen so far in any of our trips to Algonquin. Kyle, why don't you explain to the folks at home what's going on? So we've been walking for about the last 40 minutes in water and mud and muck. Uh, I've been up to my waist. Uh, it's like, it drops off suddenly, you drop in. And we've basically been lining the canoe. Probably only five minutes of that has been actually paddling. So this is uh, it's tough going. We're probably only like an eighth of the way there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You can walk the packs to here. I'll throw them in. Yay! 
This is what it's looked like for the past three hours. This is an especially deep pool. There's even a little bit of trout in them. We've seen little ones. And we are stopped on a beaver dam because it's the only dry land. And we're having a little break. I got stung on the arm twice. And Kyle fell in the river. We're drenched. And we're halfway through this part. We got what? 2,000 meter portage? I think there's a 500 in there somewhere too. Maybe like 2,500 meters. Nothing. No big deal. Bam, son. We've been on Birchcliff Creek for the whole day. It's, it's afternoon now. Probably around 1 o'clock and uh, we've been paddling, lifting, pulling, going over dams all day. I I'm white for sure. <laughs> we didn't even know this portage was here because we don't have the specific map for this area. Um, 580 meter portage and it's rough terrain it's n none of these groom trail nonsense so I already carried the canoe over Kyle's over there now I gotta grab my gear and go I saw this one I was coming through with the canoe to the cedar tree must have got hit by lightning and fallen over it still smells of fire Yeah, crazy. So that's what we just portaged around. I don't know what makes them think that that part is impassable, but the rest of it's good to go. Sand in my underwear. The end is in sight. We're coming out of this Birch Cliff Creek into the lake, and I couldn't be happier about it. We spent five hours, over five hours today in there, grueling through. <laughs> through that and uh, this is the end of that so our day is not done not by a long shot there's still lots of portaging and canoeing through the lake to do but we are done this birch cliff craziness and I'm happy can you tell in the lake proper bam son Our joy of finding this lake was quickly diminished by not finding the portage out of here. We've looked all around and uh, the only place that we can find that might be a passage to another lake is impassable. We can't paddle through it and the ground is so, the underneath the water the ground is so muck that you can't even walk. You get stuck up to your hips in like quicksand stuff. So Kyle's up, up uh, on land right now trying to find, a, find and see if this is the portage trail or not. This is ridiculous. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it's raining now. We're camping now! Frickin' drenched. On the way back to get my pack, I just carried the canoe, I don't know how long. We're not even halfway done the portage yet. Eight days in the wilderness, you can't imagine it's not gonna rain at least once, so... No biggie. I don't expect you guys to fully grasp the steepness of this hill but I'm just going back for my pack right now I carried the, uh, the canoe up it on the last leg of this portage now we only have three portages left two are small one's 450 so we're almost done for the day and I'm pooped beyond belief well we finally made it to camp we rolled in about 715 it's already getting dark and like 10 minutes after we got here, it started raining. We were just able to dry out a little bit before the rain, wash our feet, and uh, have, have food. So now we're both in our tents. Um, oh, watching back footage, and I really didn't explain how we got onto the Portage, portage Trail earlier. We couldn't access the Portage area because it was low water and the, 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 the mud was like quicksand. We couldn't walk through it. We couldn't pull the, the canoe through it like we had been doing all day. So it was really difficult. We uh, Kyle spotted this little opening on the shore when we were paddling around trying to find the portage trail. And he, we went over to it out of desperation and it turned out to be an ATV trail that actually intersected the portage trail like, I don't know, two kilometers down at least. So we all actually walked down the portage trail and then all the way down back the other way, totaling like four, four or five kilometers uh, 
<laughs> probably about an hour and a half. And we finally went back to for the canoe and took it down and all the gear and all that stuff. So day five was crazy. Um, we it gave us everything we wanted uh, and more. We got crazy rain, crazy portages. We got pissed off at each other. We got lost. Um, we saw a trout. We had. It was a good day. We got to paddle down a stream. It's a good day. It was hard, and I'm, I'm glad it's over for sure. But it, it's one to remember. And uh, tomorrow we're on the Nipissing River, and that'll be great. And it's been about two days. It's been two days today, day four and day five. We haven't seen anyone at all. So that was what we were shooting for. So we're just laying in our tents, and that's it for tonight. I'm going to bed. Hopefully, get up around six in the morning and head on out again. Good night, guys. It's coming down out there. We're in the middle of a storm. This is nuts. I'm glad I'm in my tent, not under a tarp. <laughs> Got the swollen face going on again. Uh, I pissed down rain last night, lightning, high, high winds, everything. And uh, woke up and still pretty crappy out, put on cold, wet uh, shoes. So we're camping, we're canoe camping now, boys and girls. Well, we, uh, we have breakfast and today's a big day. We have over 7,000 meters of portaging to do. And if I double carry all those, that means I have to walk 21 kilometers today. As well as paddling 20 something kilometers down the river. So, uh, yeah. So far today we've completed two portages. I've single carried half of the 2,000 meter one and just this full uh, 381. So I'm getting my man muscles, I think. Finally on day six, and that's a good thing. Um, so we get to paddle on this Nipissing River now. And behind me, there's our first Nipissing portage that we just completed, and it's because of the rapids there. Pretty sweet, the sun's coming out too, so everything's coming up Millhouse. This is a nice river. We've, uh, we've we tried to plan the trip around the Nipissing River. We're finally on it, day six. And it's really nice, nice and wide, nice and deep, so we don't have to pull through it or pull the canoe through it. And uh, it's pretty scenic. Lots of alders and pine right now. We're cruising too. We're going with the current as opposed to against it, which is always what? a bonus. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Making it easier on ourselves this time. Pretty cool. It's peaceful. Because you're not talking. <laughs> That's buddies. How many uh, meters is this? 2,700. 2,700 meter portage back into Nipissing River. From Nipissing River to Nipissing River. Yep, we're going around the Allen Rapids. Allen. Allen. Oh, Allen. Oh, that's lovely. Ouch. You got it under control? Good to go. Right up the hill. Alrighty, back on the Nipissing. So I've grown my man muscles. It's only taken me six days, but now it's no more double carries for me. So I'm sure a lot of it has to do with just getting used to being out here and carrying again. Uh, also has to do with losing food weight but with with the food that I've the, the weight that I've lost with the food I've gained water weight so uh, yep yeah, that's about it back on the Nipissing Kyle's taking it up the rear this time and we're just paddling along singing our song da -da 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 -da. Cloudy. Isn't getting better. I'm filming you filming me again. Oh, okay, that's cool. This is incredible. We're just floating. Beauty weather. I like day six.
How'd you like that? Oh, that was a blast. Was it? Woo! Let's not do that again. Hmm? Whoa, that's slippy. Wait, what are you doing? You Just waiting for the opportune moment. You mean to fall in? <laughs> Didn't you wait on? <laughs> Jerk. You're a mean person. What do you mean? Well, what are you going to do? What I was hoping you'd do is swing the canoe around so I put my bag in. Yeah, you can do it. It's right there. It's right next to you. It's right there. Thanks for helping. Mm -hmm. Now what? I don't know. So we're coming up to our first substantial beaver dam on the Nipissing. Yesterday on the Birchcliff Creek, we encountered a thousand of them, but this one's a little bit bigger. So we're going to have to uh, probably walk around. How are you feeling, Kyle? My back is one giant knot. Yep. I'm starving. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty beat too. We're on, uh, this is the fourth portage of the day. Something like that. It's called Graham's Dam. Graham's Dam! How far was that one? 410. Damn you, Graham. I know, I saw him. So, obviously I didn't have my camera out. There was just a moose laying down right next to where we paddled by in the water. And by the time I got my, we, we were real calm and slow to see what he, he would do at first. And he just watched us. So I tried to get my camera out. I, I could, as soon as I got my camera out, he started walking away slow. Really cool. Honestly, what, 10 feet from us? Oh, at least. So close, really big, really cool looking. Um, very awesome, very awesome. I'm sorry I didn't get it. Believe me, I wanted to, but. Um, we're on the last stretch right now to, to our camp. We'll be there probably, hopefully by seven. Well, we're finally done for the day. We've been going for 11 hours today. Did a ton of work and got to our campsite, which we reserved um, weeks in advance. This is the only campsite near here on the Nipissing River. And we come to find that somebody's here. The person's not here, but the tent is and all their gear is. So we're gonna have to wait for them to get back and see what the deal is. Um, they shouldn't be here. But now you gotta go get firewood and all that nonsense and set up, so off to do that. All set up, eating supper. I'm doing chili tonight. We're kinda bummed out. We uh we paddled all day and portaged all day. We worked it out, we did twenty seven or twenty five kilometers today, uh, including portage. We seven kilometers was portaging. Worked our asses off to get here. This is the only spot on the lake where we where we are, where we reserved it. We, we made a point to get to this specific spot and um, to try to get away from everybody and stuff. But two full days without seeing anybody, and now we're going to have to share our campsite. It could be worse. Like It could be a good person, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, just the principle of the thing. So kind of bummed out, but we'll see what happens when he gets here. Until then, I'm going to enjoy my chili and... Uh, Sit in my nice chair, <laughs> relax. You see my legs are all beat up, man, from walking through that crazy marsh yesterday. Uh, sore everywhere. It's a good pain though. We're set up back in there. Yeah, nice big flat area out here. <laughs> so the culprit arrived. This is Nico. And Nico, what are you doing? Tell the, tell the people how many days you're here and what are you doing? Uh, 22 day portage. For your first camping trip. First camping trip, yeah. It's crazy. Mad props. So we're camping with Nico tonight. Yep. Is it breakfast time, Kyle? Breakfast time. Well, here we are, morning day seven. Sorry I didn't get a lot of footage last night, but we were uh, just talking to Nico and then we went to bed real quick, so. I got a really good night's sleep last night, probably the best, best night's sleep I've had so far. 
we woke up and it's nice and chilly. It's actually fall weather and there's a good mist over the river and stuff. So we gotta eat and get, get out of here. It's like 6.45 right now, so. Was it? Kyle looked at your face. He's like, "You're drunk." You're like, "No, I'm not." Really? I don't even remember so that. I can tell by your face, man. <laughs> I must have been. Remember that? What did I say? When you looked at him and you're like, he was telling you you're drunk, and you looked at him and you're like, "No, you're drunk." And he goes, "No, I'm not." And you looked at him and you're like, "I can tell by your face." Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dropped my doll, my almond. So no. And now he wakes up and he's like, "Show you yeah. cooking your oatmeal again." No, I already did it. Don't you have like stop? Seven, yeah, seven videos yeah, seven right? videos about oatmeal. So. Put my hot, put my chocolate covered almonds in my oatmeal again. Are you again. supposed to get on the outside of the bag? Oh no! Is that part of the technique? Done. started our day We're back on the river it's a really really nice morning fog everywhere sun's out guns out but it's uh it's chilly and this is what i wanted from a fall trip so we're getting everything on this trip uh, yesterday when we rolled into camp i was telling you guys that there's somebody at our campsite and showed you who it was and all that stuff so i can't lie at first we were pissed off um just for the simple fact that there was no other campsites around and we had kind of planned on relaxing last night and stuff after a hard day and we kind of felt like we earned it but after talking to Nico a little bit I kind of uh, my my frustration grew to respect and adoration just simply for the fact of what he's doing he's trying to get away from he lives in Toronto and he's got a something he's got to get away from in the city uh, that he couldn't do otherwise and he just decided he's gonna go do a 20-day solo in Algonquin by himself without knowing anything about camping at all to get away from whatever he had to get away from and I respect the hell of that he came in not knowing anything and talked to an outfitter who gave him some really bad advice we, we actually had to show him how to hang a bear bag for, he's been here for six days he came in on the same day as we did and uh, he wasn't, wasn't hanging a bear bag, correct? He was only hanging it two feet off the ground for raccoons. He didn't, it was taking him 40 minutes to boil his water and he was boiling his water every day. Um, so he was ill prepared and it's not a fault of his own. He, he really didn't know when he asked a guide or an outfitter for advice and I don't know if they did it on purpose but they steered him in the wrong direction for sure. So we helped him out a little bit and I feel good about that. And uh, I told him, uh, I told him to hit me up on Facebook when he gets back. So. If you're watching this man, good job. Hope you stick it out for the full 20 days and uh, cure what ails you. We've been really blessed with the weather this trip. It's just beauty right now, all open. We've seen two otter this morning and uh, things are going good. So we're on the Nipissing River down here is where we start on the Nadine uh, Portage. And we traveled this much this morning. We're up here at this campsite right now. It's really, really super nice. Uh, and we got short portage, short one, short one. And then once we get here, we're more than, well, more than halfway there. I think we have another like two and a half hours of paddle from here. Nice. So yeah, we're making really good progress today and the weather could not be any better. Like Kyle was saying, this web, this website. Website. This yeah, is a this website. website. This campsite is really, really nice. Like Kyle was saying, um, they've they've carved I'll walk over there. They've carved uh, benches in the chair seats in the in the in the log. Sorry, and they even uh, a table, a little flat part for a table. And whoever was here last, it looks like they made that table that Kyle's using there. Right, let me try and get it. There we go. 
a lash table. I think I'm gonna make one of those at my camp. It's pretty easy to do and pretty pretty helpful. So we haven't really had enough time to fish or opportunities to fish in the past couple days in good spots. But right behind me, where you can see it, we just portaged and there's the end of this portage is rapids. So I'm going to try and catch some trout. I oh, got something. Look, I caught a fish. Yay. Oh snap. We eating good tonight. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if it's a trout or a chub. He's soft like a trout, but I, I don't have a lot of experience with trout, so I'm not too sure. But uh, caught one, Kyle caught one as well. We're throwing him back, obviously. Boop. There you go, little buddy. There you go. What do you get? Let me see. Oh, chubby. That site we just passed, because as of late 2013, this campsite was in extremely poor condition. Well, then I guess you called it right. For once. <laughs> Look at the difference in those clouds. So that's good looking clouds, and that's menacing clouds. And we're, uh, we're quite a few hours still from camp. Well, the river's really widened up at this part. We're getting out to Moose Lake soon. Really pretty here. So we're at this pretty cool campsite now. We stop here so Kyle can take a poo. Oh, you ever see the movie Aliens? It's like that, Le portage. Rapid. Just gearing up to do our very last portage of this trip. You dropped your peanut. Mm. Yep. Whoa. What the heck is that? This last one's 900 meters. Doesn't even matter though. We want to get it done and get to our campsite. And we are raring to go. How do you feel about this uh, last portage? So you're going to start it off, I'm going to finish it. Sounds good. <laughs> so you know, when we came into the park, you were the one to start the portage. Right. And I'll be the last one to do the portage. Right. It's come full circle. In the middle though, that's where it gets a little fuzzy on who did the most. Edit. That's it, our last portage, 945 meters done like that, no problem at all. And now we are on our way to the campsite. Guten Tag, Kyle. Good dog. Nice. Can you keep paddling? I don't know why are you doing that. Nope. Well, we're getting there. We're getting out to the marsh. And that black cloud that went away before is back. <laughs> but no big deal. I think we'll be able to make it to camp in time.
super nice out. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. Or the marsh. Well, we're not out of the marsh yet. Calm down. We're back on Cedar Lake, the lake that we started on. And this is the lake we're going to spend our seventh night on. We're here at our last campsite for the trip. The rain's held off all day, but it doesn't look like it's going to hold off much longer. So I gotta get set up. Tonight, uh, for tools, I brought the foam meat. Okay, I'm gonna go try to look for some good ones. Found what? Wood for the night. Nice. You probably need a hand with this. Yeah, you need a hand with a lot. We got everything set up just in time. It's coming down now. Not too hard, but it's raining. Seems like it'll be an all-night kind of thing. We got the tarp up. Kyle strung it up like a pro, Ramir style. You know. Yep. You told me <laughs> a couple times. I had to remind you. But uh, today was a great day. Uh, great last real day. Tomorrow is our eighth day. We have like I don't know an hour or so canoe over to the uh, to the put-in site, and then grab our car and head to the nine nine or so hours home. And then Kyle's got three hours after that. But... Yippee ki yay! All in all, it was a fantastic trip. Super good weather. Uh, everything went pretty much as planned. A few hiccups here and there, but you, those that's to be expected. Um, yeah, great trip. Great time of year to come camping. Really, really nice time and uh, hard trip, but it'll be epic. It'll be a good one to look back on. Both of our minds are kind of shot after this long. It's uh, even after day four or whatever, you start getting a little loopy, but uh, it's a good thing. So I'm going to continue to ramble into my camera nonsensically about nothing. Fishing was uh, not the greatest for us. I, we don't really know why. We, we did the, all the things that we were supposed to do. Went down to the end of the rapids, fished up into it. No trout. We just kept getting these, these stupid little chub things. Kyle got that real nice walleye the first day, or the second day. I, got, I think I got a big chub that one. <laughs> I, think I got a bigger chub that day. Yeah, you got, that's the time you got the little guppy bass. Yeah, it's the same day that I got that big one. Remember, I was the first one to catch fish. Yeah, but I caught the better, bigger fish. Oh my god, it never stops. You don't catch fish in Algonquin Park. Why are you so weird? You haven't had anything to drink yet. The native Algonquins. Alright. Give me the booze. All day. Air curls, boys and girls. Air curls. What do you think about your gear this trip? Anything you change? Oh, everything uh, worked out pretty good. Um, tent, epic, sleep gear, solid. Clothes, good to go. Um, more food, definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think like an extra candy bar per day would <laughs> be a minimum. 
Um, I need a better way of storing butter. It kind of leaked around out of the Ziploc bag. Uh, more food in the dinner. More chips. More chocolate. Yeah, mainly just more food. Yeah, I agree with Kyle. Uh, my gear is pretty spot on for this trip and my food was as well. All I have left is three packs of oatmeal. Um, and that's because instead of oatmeal for a couple days, I ate bars because we were hurry, in a hurry. Um, tomorrow I'll eat one pack of oatmeal that will leave me with two packs of oatmeal and that's it. That I don't have anything else other than that. So in, in the future I'd like to bring an extra meal just as a backup, so like an extra supper, dehydrated supper. My, my Condor uh, water bottle pouch that was on the outside of my backpack really did not have a use for me because I didn't drink as I was in the canoe. Um, I thought I was going to but I could have just put that inside my backpack and it kind of flopped around and got all nasty when we were waiting through the shit the other night, so that marshy stuff. But uh, maybe leave the axe at home next time for me and bring a belt knife, maybe a four and a half inch blade would be probably about perfect. Manned up on day six and since then I've been single carrying and I felt a lot better about it. I was pretty down on myself that I couldn't do it, but it's, uh, it's just, you get in this like, this mental state and you just go and it doesn't even matter. That last 900 meter portage today or 960, whatever it was, we just freaking beast mode through it was like 15 minutes. It was ridiculous. So, uh, it all changes when you're out here for a while. Well, that's it for the booze. The rest of the booze. What the H is in my effing booze here? It's like a pine twig. I think it might be a, some leaf litter. So, oh, it's debris. Uh, debris. Debris in my booze. So, I only brought 400 mils, which is about good for two nights. And Kyle. The the smart thinker, mathematician guy, brought a liter and a half. So I'm drinking his booze now, and I didn't have to portage it. So who is the smarter guy? You decide. Jerk. Who is it? I don't know. I, I hate you. Wow. I do. I had to carry your freaking booze the whole way. I got your Fritos for you because you're obsessed with potato chips. Anything else I can do for you? I am like your Sherpa, you know that? Kaula! Kaula, yeah, that's, that's my uh, Sherpa name. <laughs> I'm going to bring some of those Tibetan uh, prayer flags and hang them from my tent so then I look like a proper Sherpa. Mm -hmm. So I can carry your Fritos and your booze. And I'll probably get some atheist comment on there. There's no freaking Sherpa. Wait, why did I say atheist? I don't know. Why did I say atheist? Because you've had Sailor Jerry. Sailor Gary? Jerry. Gary. Jerry. Jailer Sari. I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know either. What, what happened to the Our conversations sometimes get in this like loop of just raw stupidity compounded on dumbness. Yeah, that's you just talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said those were my Fritos. Dude, these are chili cheese corn flavored corn chips. Oh my god. Yeah, but why did you take them from me? I thought you said that they were mine. They're not yours. I portage them. I eat them. How much do they weigh, you think? I don't care. Good. <laughs> they do taste phenomenal. Mm. Terrible for you. So good. Mm -hmm. Lots of fat. Oh, I love it. Yep. That's how you got so uh, mm. fat. Yep. I want to go to McDonald's tomorrow. I'm going to get a double cheeseburger. And I'm going to get a chocolate milkshake. And a biggie quadruple size. Oh, I don't think you can do that in Canada. There's probably laws against it. But the really cool thing is. Because America is better than Canada, my exchange rate is just phenomenal right now. Phenomenal. America! So since I had a bunch of oatmeal left, I decided to make it and put it on a stick. So I put water on it and stuck it to a stick and put it next to the fire. I'm going to try to make an oatmeal cookie, see how it turns out. Like, it's kind of like Bannock. I imagine it'll be pretty good. I think she's done. A little burned on the, the top, a little crispy, but... We'll break her, not cut her like Benock. Oh, yeah, that looks great, Joe. It's a brick of burnt. She's a little mushy on the underside. Maybe we'll flip her around a bit. Doesn't it taste like cedar? It doesn't have any flavor. Does it have any sugar in it? No, it's oatmeal. So you just put raw oatmeal and some burnt raisins in you thought that was going to taste good? They weren't burnt before I cooked them. Well, so I, you, whatever. It, I like it. You like it because you think you made something. You just made nothing. It tastes like puffed air. This is something. This is a physical thing that I made. 
called oatmeal cookie. It's a physical thing you burnt to a crisp. I mean, I don't... On one side. Yeah, and then raw on the other. Yeah, it's a really great <laughs> cookie dough. How it's much a, do I have to pay for this course? It's a good thing I have a wife. So we're talking about our next trip, and we both think we're going to do a fly-in trip because we saw too many people this, this time. We saw people for the first five days, and since then we've seen one person. But we would like to get somewhere remote, and we're thinking Wabakimi, Quetico, or Woodland Caribou. And those are all going to be fly-in uh, trips where we right. where we pay for an outfitter to take us and our canoe and our stuff on a float plane and drop us off in the middle of nowhere. I think Quetico or Wabakimi probably. And the the whole plan of the trip would be catching walleye, catching pike, doing small portages, more camp life, and booze. That's a good idea. We definitely need to budget at least 250 mils per night on that trip. All right, you heard them, you heard them folks. 250 Two, mils. 250 mils of booze per night. Late August, early September would be perfect, and then we would be able to... Oh, you're putting your finger in the screen. I see what you're doing there. You're trying, to, you're trying to F me up. You're trying to, yep, you're going to... That's what Doug does. So you're Beach. just... You're just it was Doug's cool on like rehashing you. old stuff. Doug is a great canoe partner. Compared to you, he is a strong man. Okay. Are you done? Strong man. Yep. Doug's the most fantastic person in the world. Thank you. Finally. Except mm -hmm. next to me though. I'm okay. He doesn't like you. He doesn't. No. Really? Yep. I don't. I don't blame him. What do you think now? Well, Genius. Why am I an idiot? He's smart. So. You are an idiot. I agree. All right. End scene. All right, folks, time for bed. Had a little bit too much Sailor Jerry tonight. Way to finish it off. It was last night. Good night in bed, and it's raining. I'm going to sleep like a king. I'll see you guys in the morning. Pro tip, if you can't find level ground, make your head higher than your feet on the slope. Bam, son. Good morning, guys. Morning of day eight, last day. Rained heavy all night, still raining this morning. We're just getting packed up and getting our butts on the move. We gotta go right across the lake there, and that will be our put out spot. Whoa. Well, what? Our last paddle of the trip. We gotta go right across the lake there. Back to the Brent store. Talk to the old dude there. Hopefully he's awake. So did you go Birch Cliff? Oh man, we went yeah. Birch Cliff. That Very was fun. fun eh? It was rough. Yeah, I know. It was it was rough. Rough. Yeah. You couldn't get to it. That's right there. Yeah, right next to it. But right next to it, like almost where that campsite is, yeah. there's a uh, logging road that comes up just a little ways and then back down in it. That's completely level, easy to get around and stuff. It's probably like two and a half clicks or something. Easy. That portage is actually super hilly. All right, that's it. The trip's done. It was an awesome trip. Really hard, really rewarding, super epic time. It's exactly what we wanted. So uh, just a little recap. We did it over 120 kilometers in eight days. And the hardest day, the longest day, we went for 13 hours. We did 27 clicks with 7,000 meters of portage. So that was a new record for both of us. Pretty cool. Kyle caught a walleye, no trout, but we talked to the old dude at the Brent store and found out that what to do next time for the trout. We gotta go for the spring fed areas of the river, but now we know and uh, we'll do it again sometime, I'm sure. So if you guys liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. It really helps me when you support my channel. It helps me able to come out and do these kind of videos and uh, I appreciate it. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.